Hey, 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 it's your girl Abby, AKA New Age Coach here, and I am lighting the way for those on their way to the light. To my soul vibers, that is those of you who are already subscribed, thank you. Anyone new just tuning in, welcome. On this channel, we talk all things self and soul development. So if you like that vibe and wanna join the tribe, hit subscribe. Welcome to this edition of Coaching New Age Coach. And in this series, we do this about once a month where I introduce you to other amazing, fantastical humans doing amazing things, lighting their own way, making their own path in this world. I cannot wait to move your spirit, your mind, and your body with our guests. So. Let's get right into it. We've made it into the video with our guest of the day, and you can see her beautiful face here on the screen. And I would like to introduce you all to Alex. And Alex, which you will learn more about in just a few moments, is a somatic ecstatic movement guide. And before we get into you learning all about this fantastical human, um, what she's actually going to do is show us some of her work by getting us all grounded in so we can get present in this video. Beautiful. Thank you, Abby. Hi, everyone. I feel really excited to be here. Let's take a moment to just kind of drop in together before we start. So wherever you are, if you're driving, maybe keep your eyes open. But if not, and it feels comfortable to do so, you can let your eyes rest or let them close completely as you just drop into the space that you find yourself in in this moment. Feeling your sits bones on the ground or your feet on the ground. Even if you're moving or on the move, just feeling the connection between where your body meets the earth and how you're so held in that space. starting to notice your breath as you inhale where are you feeling that expansion in your body maybe as you inhale you feel expansion in your chest area or even in your neck and shoulders maybe in your stomach or even lower, closer to your womb area. And just remembering that there's no wrong answers, we're just witnessing. Witnessing the breath as it fills us and as we allow it to leave our system with our exhale. As you continue to breathe, we'll bring our awareness to very base of our stomach. A little lower than our belly buttons and just allow your breath to move into this space. Flowing downward with your inhale and moving up through you with your exhale. And now just bringing your awareness gently to your heart. If it feels good, you can place a hand over your heart and a hand over your stomach. Feeling that warmth and connection with your own hands and the rest of your body. Just breathing some gratitude into your heart for a moment giving our hearts some permission to soften, to open to each other in this moment. And I'd like to welcome in our ancestors and our guides, all the allies of this plane. Mm, may we be rooted in the earth through this conversation and open in our hearts. So it is. 
in your own time. You can welcome yourself back into the space that you're in with some gentle movements, whatever comes through in your own, in your own body, in your own vessel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. Thank you, Alex. And favorite line is welcoming some gratitude into our hearts because that's also how I feel. And I'd like to just take a moment to actually thank you as well for uh, being here with us today and sharing your voice and sharing your gifts with everyone um, on this platform and beyond. So thank you so very much for that. And and also for leading that meditation, I feel more grounded and relaxed already and much more uh, present in, in my body, which is part of part of what you offer is really helping people get in tune and touch with their body. So why don't you kick us off by actually formally introducing yourself and telling the audience just a little bit about what it is you do? Yeah, thank you, Abby. Mm -hmm. It's really my pleasure to be here. <laughs> so I'm Alex and um, I live in Boulder, Colorado right now. And I work with somatic movement to guide people into finding their own internal compass, a divine internal compass, so that more of us on this planet are moving through our day with our hearts open and in a clear communication with our own bodies, our vessel so that we're making decisions based on how we really feel and following through with that, following our pleasure and our passion. So that's really what lights me up in this world. Um, and this work is in some ways new to me, stepping into the level of leadership that I am right now. And at the same time, I've been noticing more and more the threads that are my movement practice and how they, they go back all the way to very early in my life. Yeah. And so I also feel like this, this practice and this work is so natural for me as well. I was going to ask actually leading into that. So if, was there a specific moment where you realized this was work you were doing? Was it intuitive where you were just always, you know, moving and, and what kind of led you down this path of discovering, if you will, your, your movement practice? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, ever since I can remember, I've been a very uh, expressive human. <laughs> either completely naked or in a <laughs> my whole childhood <laughs> I would rollerblade up and down my street and pretend I was being interviewed by someone <laughs> so this is great it's happening <laughs> it comes true manifesting is real <laughs> um and at the same time I've always felt quite uncomfortable and constricted in my body I never felt right and I could, you know, I used theater and voice and circus and just my own imagination and make believe to as a place where I could fully express myself. And so stepping into, you know, more adolescence and moving into high school, of course, we'd all compounds in high school. And that's just such a hard time to yeah. begin with. But, you know, the theater and circus arts and really being in my body in that way was where I found um, was where I found solace. And on stage, I really felt like I could just embody this character and through that really embody my most alive self. So after high school, I moved to Boulder, actually, right after I graduated. So this is my second time living here. <laughs> And it, it was my, in my early twenties that I began having a, a pretty serious eating disorder. And again, this all came from the, the compounding of feeling so wrong in my body yeah. for so long. And, and also having that affirmed to me by, you know, my biological mm -hmm. father and by peers at school, you know, uh, yeah. I, I'm a short Italian. <laughs> me too. Yeah. And it's beautiful. And <laughs> Um, to fully embrace that and but in the time in that time I was living alone and all of a sudden found 
you know, an eating disorder as a way to control, as a way yeah. to control my body and how I looked and how the, I wanted the world to perceive me. Uh, after a two year journey through this eating disorder and then another year of really coming into recovery, I, I came into that recovery on my own and through my own movement practice and creating intentional space for myself to learn how to feel again is what mm -hmm. I was actually contemplating today. I was like, what, because so much of this practice has been, has been coming to the root what's at the root of this yeah. feeling? What's really at the root? And at the root of healing from my eating disorder was, was learning how to feel again. There's a very specific kind of numbness that comes along with my particular eating disorder, which is all I can speak to, which was bulimia. Yeah. But there's, you just, it's like you're 20 miles away, just kind of watching it all. Yeah. <laughs> and so actually coming back into my skin and into my body and being able to feel my experience has been just a really like big yeah. transformative and, and continues to be something that I am expanding into every day in my practice. And it's, um, it just gets getting better and better, you know? <laughs> oh, well, firstly, I mean, thank you so much for sharing your story like that. Um, that takes a lot of courage and vulnerability. When you talk about this practice and your eating disorder and always, like even you mentioned, you were a kid on stage playing characters. How would you relate dancing and this embodiment practice and moving to spirituality? So for example, like in spirituality, we, we always talk about the mask we wear and it's part of taking those masks off and taking those characters off or at least becoming aware of who the different characters we play are or, you know, being in touch, like you said, with feeling that's part of the spiritual journey. So really understand we're not emotions, but we're witness to these emotions and what is the root of that. So those are a few examples to ground the question. But what what kind of similarities do you see between your your practice, your your movement, your dancing and kind of your overall spiritual journey? A lot of my spiritual practice comes from Zen teachings and also from you know from tea I, I'm drinking some tea right now um, and I'm in no way a tea teacher but I am a tea student and a lot of tea is Zen and I'm also just seeing all the simul similarities within Zen and this movement practice and so much of Zen is dropping this concept of right and wrong or mine or yours yeah. it's like this zero separation also just seeing things as an experience yeah. and in our movement practice that's really what we go for because so many people when I talk to them about movement they're like yeah I can't dance and I'm like it mm -hmm. doesn't matter you have a body you have a body you can <laughs> have a body yeah. yeah and what they're really saying to me is I don't know how to feel in my yeah. body I'm not I don't feel safe feeling in my body yeah and um and there's nothing wrong with that, mm -mm. right? But, and that is a start. Yeah. So our practice is sitting with that and moving with that and allowing the brain to have its moment of telling you that you're doing it wrong, but then being affirmed over and over again by mm -hmm. your experience that you can't mess it up. And when we move in such an intentional way of, you know, trauma, old past experiences, things, old emotions, things come up. And it's a, a chance, an opportunity to allow it to express itself in a way that we never have before. Because yeah. so much of what we're taught in this society is to, Stop you know, it. act the exact opposite yeah. of how we're feeling. You know, you're mm -hmm. feeling like crap. Well, you better smile. smile. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. don't, don't make a big deal out of it. So um, a lot of this practice is just a fat permission slip to let our rage out to, or to go deep into our pleasure or mm -hmm. to be ecstatic, to allow ourselves to be happy, you know? And then, and the key though, is that we're not holding on to any of it. No. It's, it's continuing to be the witness through it all to, ah, okay, I'm in my practice and I'm like really feeling something right now. And I'm going to intentionally keep breathing and go deeper into this and let it come. Mm -hmm. And then when I feel that it's cleared, I'm going to allow space for the next emotion to come in. Mm 
You know, just because oh. I was weeping two seconds ago doesn't mean I couldn't be hysterically Joyous. laughing in yeah. you know, the next second. For the audience that doesn't know, I've actually participated in a practice with Alex. First time I went there and when I walked in, I was one of those people who were like, okay, is this going to be like this is, I don't know if this is my thing or, you know, I can't really do this the right way. And the environment that Alex set was so sacred and so comfortable and it felt so safe. I remember watching Alex for a moment dance and I remember pulling her aside after and saying like, you have no idea, just witnessing you be yourself in that, in your power. And not even because I'm watching you, she was doing her own thing, didn't even realize I was watching her, but to see her process and go through the emotions with no qualms, no judgment, no attachment, move intuitively. It was just like one of the most profound impacts on my life to be like, it's not even about that. Everything in my life up until that point was choreographed. Speaking of dance, like I need to know the steps. I need to know what I'm doing. I need to have like a certain control. I need to be able to know which way I'm going. I need to not look silly. So I remember at one part I was like flapping like a bird. I literally felt like I had channeled like an eagle at one point. I'm just like looking out the window, like flying and like wanting to like go out this window and be free. And I was like, well, what is happening? But this feels so good. I don't care. I'm an eagle. <laughs> This ego. What I'm also really feeling into is how this practice is has rippled into my whole life, and it's how I run my business too. It's like, uh, like you were saying, of like everything else until this point was choreographed. Mm -hmm. There's so many stories in our society that we have to know exactly what it is. You have to have it written down. You have to have mm -hmm. your plan. This, 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 and this, mm -hmm. and it's so unbalanced in that way toward that more masculine structured energy. And I, it's been really beautiful and fascinating to just begin to step into a more balanced and embodied feminine way of being in business, because it's like, actually, if I don't want to show up right now. Like me and you just yeah. checked in today before yeah. this meeting. And it's like, there was no expectation where if one of us was feeling off, we would of course wait yep. <laughs> because that's where the magic is when we feel available to show up. Absolutely. And also so much of what I teach has to do with working with the larger cycles of, of this planet, working yes. with the moon cycles monthly, and then also the yearly cycles and really acknowledging those for the massive impact that they have on us yes. and and learning to to move with them rather than trying to stay in this rigid structure mm -hmm. that is so arbitrary that really yes. we've made up yep. <laughs> literally yes <laughs> yes it's really interesting even if we take like the spirituality aspect out of it and just look at it from like a purely like body perspective it's movement like it's such a healthy outlet no matter what you can trick your brain in essence like if you laughed right now even if you didn't feel like laughing like our brain chemicals do not know the difference between real laughing and fake laughing so just the act if you're willing to show up and just do the act anyway without without needing to know the whys and the hows or anything like that if you just show up and you're committed to the practice which is why it's a practice that natural intuitive uh physiological endorphin releasing chemical releasing like the way our bodies are will help guide you through this process too yeah, totally and and then also seeing that connection that we start to build with our bodies as a vital communication so it's a different kind of communication than we're used to but you know starting to like when I feel something I follow that now mm -hmm. I trust it so deeply even if I don't understand why as we tune in more and more with our bodies, we can start to make the distinction more of like, where is this signal coming from? Is this mm -hmm. a signal from my system or is this just my brain? You know, mm -hmm. because maybe I'm like, I'm really resenting, like not wanting to go out for my run or my hike. And it's like, okay, why do I not want to move right now? Yeah. Why? Is it because I need to take a bath instead yeah. Or is it because I'm like self-sabotaging with my mind, you know? Oh, I love it. That brings up a quote that I, I think I read somewhere on your site. We'll put all Alex's information down below uh, so you can find her. But like you said, you have to listen to your heart. Which which is that? Is that your mind, your heart? And that's what dancing can help with is also help you get that answer. Because the quote is something like, 
to watch us dance is to hear our heart speak, right? So to watch us dance is to hear our heart speak. If you're not even sure the answer to that question, that would be a great invitation to get up and move because your answer will come up. If you're extremely exhausted, you're going to feel that as you move. Maybe it's because you need to take a rest or maybe you start to get more angry as you're moving and you realize, no, I really need to get out for a run or process this in some other way. And now you have that energy. Like those answers come just by asking the question, having your heart open and being witness to yourself moving. Yeah. And, and it, this practice has also transformed the way that I run the way that I climb. However you get in your body, this practice, it's like, now that you have this conversation with your body, when you're doing these other things that are more high intensity Mm -hmm. or just your sport to begin with, it's like, ah, I can really hear you now. And we can really work together in such a beautiful way because I'm not so blocked by this expectation of what it's supposed to look like or how I'm supposed to be doing it or whatever the brain has to say. It's just clear communication between my heart, my understanding and my vessel, you know? Ooh, ooh, that needs to be a quote. I feel like the word, sometimes the word spirituality, it's almost like we're referring to something outside of ourselves Mm -hmm. and really, like this practice is a spiritual practice but it's all about just being coming into ourselves coming yes. home to our bodies and really reclaiming the the vessel that we're in but also the heart and our ancestry our souls this three-folded kind of like mind body spirit is one other way to put it right yeah but truly being embodied in that, it's like a whole other conversation that we get to have. And it's, it's really exciting to start sharing that with people. And because really it's, it's not me, you know, like we can create the space, but it's, it's whoever shows up and is willing to show up is going to start that journey with themselves. And it's it's just so beautiful to be able to facilitate that. It's also just a practice, like you said, of, of presence and awareness. If you're not used to understanding what that looks like, what it feels like, like you said, as you're dancing, sometimes you're like, what, what is this like? tingling sensation in my fingers, right? I'm going to follow that. But is that, is that then, you know, later on, maybe a week later, you're in a situation at work that you're getting angry and you realize you have that same tingling in your fingers, right? It's a way to start um, becoming aware of the different sensations in your bodies as a way to, to, to start understanding what are triggers for you, for example, or how to then work with these emotions and, and channel them in different new creative expressive ways as well. It's a way to feel and even the word embodiment, right? It couldn't be embodiment without your body, which is why this, this practice of moving your body is so important for any type of embodiment practice. The, the word is right in it. How would you explain like a session with you? Cause that's where we started when I explained kind of, we met and we danced, like what does a typical session look like for you? What do you walk a client through? How does this actually work when someone comes to practice with you? Intentionally allow it to be quite fluid, but the the, the overall structure of the container would just be, you know, showing up and meeting each other right now, of course, it would be via Zoom um, and just sharing some space, getting to know each other or checking in. And then usually I, well, I actually, I always start with then just grounding into our intentional container that we're going to step into together. So similar to what we did to enter into this conversation, just coming into our bodies and opening our hearts so that we can begin talking and usually in that meditation I will guide you into a little bit more awareness in your body and then we'll start from there because again we are here to to unpack the conversation and like you said so beautifully Abby to start putting the pieces together of whoa that's where I feel anger okay so then when you're doing something random and all of a sudden you're like have this you're like whoa okay anger and then you know the conversation just flows wherever it flows and we talk about whatever comes up and um there's 
like lots of different modalities kind of all coming together and just being filtered through me, my system, and also just the energy between myself and my clients followed by some sort of movement practice. And whether that's with music or without music and is more of a meditation or a really like shake it out kind of situation, <laughs> like there's such a wide range. And whenever we meet, it's always going to be different because we're always my movement practice never looks nope. the same. never <laughs> nope. I wouldn't expect it to yeah <laughs> yeah and and also I just want to be really clear about this movement practice it's like doesn't even necessarily have to be movement because mm. there's so much movement yes. in stillness mm. as well 100 percent even in sitting with our bodies and feeling the movement of our blood, of our organs moving, coming in tune with the internal landscape of our system mm -hmm. um, and, and honoring that as mm -hmm. your movement practice, just the same. And maybe allowing some gentle movement, but I know in certain times of the moon cycle, my movement practice is not movement at all. Yeah. It's like laying on the floor, doing whatever it is that I that's need to do. That's so yeah. beautiful. I'm so happy you brought that up. And that's such an important distinction. And even, even if you think about like a yoga practice, they say that like Savasana is the most hardest position of all. You're moving through an entire hour and a half, sweating, bending, twirling, doing whatever, but it's the hardest thing for most people to actually sit still even though that's movement. So thank you for bringing that up because it's, it's equally as important. Both things can, it's balance. You need all of it to come into balance. And it's a great way that I just love to like remove the block of like, oh, but I don't know how to dance. It's like, that's why I don't call yeah. it a dance practice. Yeah. And it's even like movement practice it, that it does still resonates obviously, because that's still what I call it, but it's yeah. like, even in that, it's like Azric, you know? Yeah. You have to move. The fine yes. print of it. Yeah. That's so beautiful. I love that. That was such a great call out. What would you say is like a challenge in this line of work? Or what do you find challenging personally about pursuing practice? So in saying yes to stepping into my work, I took a huge leap of of faith in my life. I quit yeah. my day job <laughs> and um, the other side work that I was doing naturally came to a close right now. And so what I find challenging about this work is that when we opt in, we are, we really ha just have to opt in. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like I have a choice anymore and it feels so right. And so, so there's like a, a really deep aspect of trust but it's also every day a test of can I receive this can I open in the face of the unknown mm. and in the, the trusting that I'm here to live this purpose which is a fully embodied version of myself that I can share with the world and whatever that medicine is let it be you know <laughs> And, yeah, and I think that's that's for everyone, right? And so, yeah. and that's what I that's what I want to share with people. That's what I want to empower people to realize within themselves that we have the power to do it. You know, hundred percent. Yeah, and I know Abby, you just did something so <laughs> similar, and you know, look at you go, girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm going. It's like the it's like the oxymoron, like uh, jumbo shrimp, right? Things that don't make sense. It's like just trust, but like everything is like unknown you're like wait a second how does this make sense is you're just being asked to deeply trust and to jump off the side of a cliff but know that you're going to land on your feet and it's it's this that trips us up which is also why that practice of getting out of here is so important because it's getting into that flow that's going to allow you to take that leap and flow gracefully with that jump right so it's this is the tricky part it's it's the most easiest advice trust but it's the hardest hardest thing to do sometimes so yes I completely resonate with that sentiment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I think the only other thing I would say on that too is like the more we allow ourselves to expand, we're living on this spectrum. So it's like the deeper I feel that pleasure and that beauty, also the deeper I'm feeling that deep collective oh. grief and yes. really processing so much. And 
when I opted into this work, the amount of stuff that just started coming up because all of a sudden I was making space for it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, seeing that as worthy work in Mm -hmm. this world. Yes. And just noticing all the stories that I've built around, like what is work and my worth, you know, seeing that really kind of tumble now, which is beautiful as I'm continuing to just lean in and trust, but Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Yeah. What's a takeaway you would leave someone with if just about devotional movement in general or your work, if you could have them leave this video with one thing locked and anchored in, in their mind, what would it be? You can't do it wrong. (laughs) And any experience that you have when you show up to your movement practice is so perfect and valid and so important. What are different ways that people can find you if they're curious about maybe taking a session with you or um, lay out shameless self plug here, all the ways that people can find you and your beautiful work. Yeah. Thanks Abby. (laughs) So right now I'm on Instagram as sacred anatomy and it's sacred anatomy with an underscore at the beginning and at the end. Um, my website right now is actually under a different name. It's Mm -hmm. under divine nomad wellness. And I I used to live in a transient way on the road. Mm -hmm. And so my work has shifted a lot in the last year. So my website is still kind of beta, but you guys can still go check it out. (laughs) And, um, my new program is also in beta right now. So if someone is feeling the really strong call to work with me one-on-one, I'm open to that, but I will be having some programs opening up in the next few months. So for now you can just follow along on Instagram. That's where I am the most. So yeah. And I'm not bragging or anything when I say I'm going to be part of this beta. So I'm not bragging. I'm just saying, (laughs) You guys, it's going to be amazing. You need to go check out one of these resources and you need this beautiful, fantastical human in your life. We'd like to give you a sneak peek of kind of this embodiment in motion. So what we're going to do is we're going to say goodbye to Alex on the screen here and we'll transition off where you can witness her and her beautiful art and her beautiful way and in her beautiful practice. So Alex, thank you so much for your time again. Appreciate you and everybody else. Stay tuned and enjoy. What's coming next? Okay, my loves, thank you for being here. We are going to enter into a practice together to start. And then I'm gonna flow into my own practice and you're welcome to join me, okay? So if you're just entering into this video, you can find some space wherever you find yourself. Just a, just some, just a little bit of space wherever you are. And we're gonna start standing and we can sway back and forth a little, just feeling your feet on the earth. Maybe you take a couple steps back or steps forward, feeling the weight shifting on your feet, moving through your toes, to the ball of your foot, to the heel of your feet. And bringing that movement to a close, allowing your swaying to become more subtle. And as your swaying is subtle, you find yourself moving through center. Allow your body to kind of sway itself into center. Standing with your feet hip distance apart. Coming into full stillness, taking some deep breaths into the base of your stomach, and exhaling through your mouth, inhaling through your nose. I'd like you to imagine a golden light just 
just above your head where your crown chakra lives. And this ball of light is hovering over you until a beam comes down through the top of your head. This beam of golden light moves down through your throat down the very center of your spine, through your sits bones, and into the ground below you, rooting you, rooting you down. And you can even feel your hips tilt slight, slightly forward, just slightly, as this golden thread roots you to the earth. And this light now washes over you. You can feel it moving through your whole body, through your shoulders and arms, your knees, your calves, and finally radiating down through the bottom of your feet into the floor or the earth below you. And if you are on the floor, seeing that light continue downward until it reaches the cool earth below and you feel it root you down. from this space, I invite you to begin to walk very slowly and very intentionally. As you lift your foot, you place the ball of it first and then allow the heel to make contact as you lift your other foot. Placing the ball of your foot, allowing the heel to make contact as you lift your other foot. You can keep your eyes closed or soft as you begin walking, feeling the connection between your feet and the earth as you do. Taking any movement your feet wish to take, allowing your feet to completely lead the way, and keeping the rest of your body soft and still. Maybe your hands start to allow themselves to get involved. If you feel your feet asking for more expression and flow with their movements. Mm. And we have some music playing quietly, but Really, the body needs no movement in order to express. And at 
this time, I just invite you to continue allowing your feet to guide the way and let the rest of your body just follow however it wants to. Remembering that you cannot mess this up. And that your movement is perfect just as it is. Thank you for joining me in this practice and I hope you have a blessed day.